Welcome, I'll tell you. welcome everybody on Facebook. We're live, and um, so today we're continuing our discussion about the priest. Um, the I'm sorry, it's the third dialogue between Alan Kardec and the priest from the book "What Is Spiritism," which is available here at the center or on Amazon. Smile. So today we're continuing our discussion about the priest. I have a deep voice. <laughs> so, so. Um, so uh, everybody here, I know, has read all the material, right? So, right. <laughs> right, yes. right, right. So, so um, I, I'm finding as I'm reading this, there's like a lot of things here that we can talk about, like between, um, you know, the priest mentioned some questions. They're pretty good questions he asks sometimes, um, and uh, it's leading to a lot of discussion. So, um, so starting. Now we're on page 132 if you have this edition of the book, otherwise, because um, um, basically what I did was I numbered the questions that the priest asked, and the priest asks 20 questions in this chapter, so we're on number 10, um, which you have a different version, it's going to sound a little different, but it's the same, just a different translation. Um, so the priest asks, I suppose that certain points of the Catholic doctrine are contested by spirits you regard as being of high order. And I suppose that these points may actually be erroneous according to these same spirits for those for whom they are articles of faith, whether right or wrong, and who practice them accordingly. Can such a belief be harmful to their salvation? So the priest is asking, like, like let's say I'm Catholic and I believe in confession. And maybe the spirits are saying that confession isn't really necessary. Maybe that that's, maybe they're trying to. You know, I'm just saying maybe hypothetically, but but I'm a Catholic and I'm going and I'm confessing every Saturday, every Sunday, every weekend, whatever. Is and if that's wrong, um, would it be? Is it bad for me in the long run? And, you know, as, as far as like eternally, um, you know. And that's just kind of one example, of kind of just pulling up. Um, and Alan Carter is saying, oh, oh of course not. Um, if, if a person is doing something that they believe is right, and if it if it's um, if if they're doing it with out of sincerity, um, and they're doing it for the right reason, and it's it's for the good ultimately, then there's nothing wrong, you know, with having a belief that that may not be, you know, right. But let's say I have a belief that's um, I very strongly believe in something, but it gives me an excuse to do evil. Um, then of course it's not going to be, um, you know, the, this, the the high order spirits are definitely going to say um, that that in the long run it's bad for your, you know, they use the word salvation, but um, I would say maybe evolution as far as we, we could say that. But what I wanted to ask is, what do you guys think? Can our beliefs be harmful um, to our to our evolution? Our, our own beliefs. And what do you guys think about that? You know, whether whether a belief is right or wrong. Um, do you think? Do you think our beliefs? And I'm just saying, like person, like on a personal level, like what what are your beliefs? And do you think that they're they're good or bad towards your personal evolution? Um, like for example, I could say, as far as like when I started my spiritual journey, I had a lot of. Because um, I, I started really from ground zero, I had like no spirituality <laughs> when I started, like just becoming curious about about spirituality, and um, along the way I've like picked up a few things, and then I've also like let go of a few things. Um, so I mean I don't know how you, how you guys feel about that. Um, the question is if our own personal beliefs could be harmful in the long run, the answer would be yes, because the, um, it's easy to create our own laws, and the only laws that are truth are the universal laws. And, the, uh, right, and those are the laws of the universe that we're, um, that we're governed by, right? And uh, so for now we'll say, and humans and this planet, we have our set of, of universal laws. Actually, we learned that recently. There was a lecture, that, a study here, discussing some of that last week in fact but um, so we all have what we believe to be in here to work our own law and our own beliefs it's like easy to find those within ourselves um, and then some of them you go hey you know I used to do that 
So there's a character trait or something, you know, where you, you might be thinking that this is the way to do it, and it's the right way according to you, but it's also the only way, and anybody who crosses that path, you'll be the first one to go, oh, it's not like that. But that could be mm -hmm. only your belief. These other people might not even understand uh, a very little bit about what you're trying to instruct, but according to you, if your belief and that's the way it has to be, or it is, that's a really that good point. That can be misguiding very easily. Misguiding. A lot, a lot of people. I mean, when what I'm kind of trying to talk, what is it? Some of these more subtle beliefs, like the belief that everybody has to do the same thing that I do to to become, you know, to be to evolve. You know, no, like that, that's that's one that's one thing. And like I, I want to say, I want to say everybody, but a lot of us have that belief, like you know, like what I'm doing is right, and like you guys need to do what I'm doing. Like if you want to have what I have, you got to do what I do. <laughs> you know, a friend of mine told me about the, you know, <laughs> um, but but a lot of us feel that way, like 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 um, that if you're not doing what I'm doing, then you're doing something wrong, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I have that. <laughs> I really believe that if people don't believe the way I believe. They're really doing something I, wrong. I can admit it. <laughs> I can admit it. That's why he's not coming back to this planet. <laughs> you're not being incarnated, so you're, that's different. No. <laughs> Um, but that was an interesting example. I'm going to have to think about what you just said about that. But again, the, the beliefs that aren't uh, universally true, uh, that aren't uh, that aren't divine. You know, I'll pick whatever words. You know, we're learning through spiritism and or other religions. You can see them overlap, and you know it's truth. That uh, we're smart enough to know that. There's a power beyond our human selves. Okay, right? So that's a, probably a, a decent belief. It's not mine. It's something that is concluded by no other than you. Um, but uh, so personal beliefs can be harmful because they can. That's a beautiful question, actually. Well, it's it's so deep. Let me let's pick one. Racism. So if you believe that this other person because of the color of their skin or their creed. Very harmful, and I'll, you're going to be hurt, and suffer a long time until you get over this, and you learn that that is inaccurate. I was right? just reading before I got here um, an article in the Economist about studying um, interracial marriage in the U.S., and they said ever since um, I think it was 1967, the Supreme Court um, banned as far like states that that wouldn't allow interracial marriage. Um, so they've been collecting data since that time, like how many marriages, and at first it was like a very small percentage. Now they're saying like it's been steadily rising every year, but it's only at about 18% right now of marriages that are interracial. So they're, they're still saying that even though marriage is legal in the U.S. between races and mixed races, that um, it's still a social taboo. You know, so that, that was an interesting <laughs> thing to read about. I love reading The Economist, you know, besides Alan Kardec, I don't know if I should say. Well, when we, when you were, were asking the question, I thought about that, I forgot that guy, Gene Jones, what is his name? The guy that went the to cooling? South America and a lot of people killed them, themselves yeah. at the same time in the, in the 80s, in the, yeah, yeah. the, the, the uh, late guy. 70s. Remember? Did, remember yeah, that? drinking the, uh, what do they call it? I, they, I, they laced this drink with... Uh, yeah, because the a group of a group of what, what are you going to say? A group of aliens supposed to come and rescue them, something like that, right? I don't really remember. Uh, but I was thinking about that, like when the, those souls they woke up and they out of their bodies. And they would answer this question to you like, yes, totally. <laughs> like, of course, yes, desperately. But if we, we were uh, practicing presence and uh, in our lives, we would all say yes. Because remember that we, we like to think that what we are doing is always the right thing to do, right? But we are basically, spiritually speaking, we are more like teenagers, close to the like to being a kid, than maturely 
spiritually speaking. Mature spirits, the spirits say that because of of this attitude that we think we are right, we are always right, and we don't have this um, the spirit of curiosity, always trying to open our hearts and our minds. Uh, the first reaction we have when someone talks about their religion or their beliefs is to say, you know, and do we really listen to them? And yeah, exactly. Even in here, are we listening to them, or are exactly. we just waiting for a chance to tell exactly. them, exactly, like what we think? It happened here in the spiritual center. Uh, there is a, a a gospel on Thursday. It's a it's a healing treatment on Thursday, and it's free for for the the people that comes. It's in Portuguese, but soon we will have uh, in English. So. Uh, we there are people that come for the healing treatment, the the magnetism, uh, the magnetic healing treatment, treatment, and they are not spiritists. But everybody is welcome, right, to be part of this uh, uh, healing treatment and uh, energy treatment. And uh, the other day, uh, a month ago, we were we were discussing as a spiritist that uh, the the child and there is a, a spirit. In that body, it's an old spirit. It's an experienced spirit that comes with, uh, you know, with all the, the knowledge of previous existences and the spiritual life. But then two uh, participants of that uh, circle, they said, no, I don't believe that. I do believe that all children, all the child when it's born, it's, it's an angel. It doesn't have any guilt or anything, and everybody was like this, uh, including myself. I'm, I'm not a, a hypocrite, including myself. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was an awkward moment. So what you're saying, so true. <laughs> we were like, whoa, but it's true, you know. Yeah, I mean, it gets it gets uncomfortable even to hear sometimes when somebody says something you don't agree with. I'm kind of like white knuckling on my chair, like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so when, you guys, when you guys talk about harm, would it be the same as saying that it's slowing down the evolution process? That too, yes. That is, I would think I so. Through the same yes. thing? Because it's probably yes. either moving forward or, or moving backwards. Yeah, yeah. 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 stacking it from, from moving forward. Well, yeah. you won't go backwards, you just won't go yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah. Think of it that mm -hmm. way. But it, in yeah. terms of harm, she mentioned this group yeah. suicide. That's harm yeah. in its own way, right? Physical mm -hmm. harm. Mm -hmm. It ended your current incarnation. You probably had a lot more to do in this particular life, those mm -hmm. people. And because they followed someone that says, hey, let's go to a happy place, and that's not really what happened. Mm -hmm. Their belief took them somewhere else. So yeah. lots of different views of harm, right? Could be mm -hmm. emotional harm, physical harm, spiritual harm. Uh, or somebody might have a, harm, a belief that because I'm a, in a different social status that I have more rights than you do. Right. You know, like right. because I'm I was born white, I should I should have a privilege. You know, or you know, and mm -hmm. somebody else is that they're not white. You know, right. that's, we don't have to be always bring a race into it. But I mean, some right, people right, right. feel like, oh, I'm upper class, and so I, I deserve this. And, uh, right. I'm you know, if you're a lower class, you're a blue collar person. Um, you know, you deserve right. to have. You don't deserve to make. You know living wage or, you know, whatever. Many, you were going to say something? Um, are you about to read the next question? No, keep it. Because, I mean, it's, it, it, they kind of go together, so I guess. Yeah, I mean, whatever you want. Just read, I guess you're going to read the next question, then I'll, then I'll. Well, I have more, I have more oh. topics. I got, okay. I got stuff. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, no, I was just going to say, so I was just going to say that. One um, question, we're doing it. I was just going to say that what, what everybody's kind of saying, it's, it's kind of like at the core of what he's trying to say. It's, it's, it's more based on what your true intentions are behind your actions. So you can hide behind your faith and say, you know, I'm doing this because this is what my God is telling me, or this is what my book is telling me. But you know, like deep down inside that, you know, that something might be wrong with that action. Like how, you know, in, in Islam, how they believe that all the religions are, you know, inferior to what, to what they believe. Right, it even says that. It even says that you should go out and try to convert these people to Islam. 
right? Even if so far as if you want to go and kill them, you know what I mean? Like mm. that, you know. So, and even even the even the, um, the even with Christianity, I mean, the Crusades, they went around and slaughtered people. They went through and say, hey, you can convert or you can die, you know. And they were doing this, you know, as their belief. This is what it was. This is what their faith was telling them to do. They were being driven, and they were being promised. You know, treasures and, and 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 passage to heaven and salvation by committing these these acts, and I think that this is what drives so many people away from organized religion, is because deep down inside they know that they're good people and they try to you know live their life you know honestly and try to do the right thing and help other people. But then they read these things in the Bible and they read these things, you know that you know in Islam the and the persecution of Jews and we can go on and on with all these things that organized religion has done. And they. they they look at that and they read the stories and in, in, you know in, in these books and they they say you know I don't I don't agree with that you know and I know I'm a good person deep down inside but I don't agree with what they say like you know in, in the Bible there's a story a man was collecting firewood on the on the Sabbath day and then God says this man must die and they killed him so it's kind of like you know it's <laughs> where are they going with these stories you know it's kind of to me it just seems so so counterproductive to what the core of of trying to be a good person and what these faiths are trying to say it just kind of goes against all that. So I think that's one of the reasons why people are, are driven away from organized faith is because they know that they're, they're good people and they try to do good things and then they see people who go to church and they say, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christian, I go to church, you know, every Sunday and I believe in God and then you see them, you know, cursing people out and, you know, not helping people who, who need help and they think they're better than other people and they say, you know, well, you know, I'm a good Christian and I go to church and I'm raising my kids to go to church and, you know, I baptize them and I'm following all the rules but then, you know, they're really not, they're really not following the true, you know, the core tenets of, of trying to lead a, 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 a honest and, you know, good life. I, I grew up with a lot of that because I would see, you know, a lot of people that would go to church every weekend and they, they were like active members of their churches and things, um, but then they would like gossip like crazy, or they'd like start these committees, and these committees were just like, you know, they, they were just there to like talk about people and decide like to judge people, and then to like, like reprimand them, you know, I, I saw it growing up a lot, so it's like, but then you see these people and how they live their lives, and they're just like, like I would not want to be like that, <laughs> you know, like they seem kind of miserable, but actually what, I, what you're saying kind of brings me to a good point, because the next question I was, I was coming up with was, um, what good are our beliefs? without action. You know, just oh. because I believe in something, oh. it, what good is it if I don't follow it up with action? But, well, well, and so many, many, many followed up on that, the mask that people, uh, you know, it's got kind of like the story is, you know, the bottles that make the less, least amount of noise, the more full. You think about it that way, so somebody who's chiming about how good they are, you know, there's a good chance it's not like that. For me, beliefs are overrated. compared to experience. And to experience God within inside of us and everywhere doesn't mean any religion. You can have that experience. And you know, I don't want to start a new religion, but that's that's the only religion that I could conceive of having some some sense of some uh, reality. But as far as beliefs, well if I have these beliefs that means that I'm gonna to go to heaven. No, no, no. Heaven is here and now. If you if you are practicing love, and if you if you experience God within inside of yourself and everywhere, and anyone anybody read my last uh, blog on Jesus? Yes. Mm -hmm. the I didn't read that one yet. Huh? I didn't read that one. Yeah. 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 That's all I got to say. That's quite profound. I love that. So what we just heard was, you ever heard the expression, heaven on earth? Anybody? Uh -huh. That's what he said. So it's your state of mind. It's your choice and how you conduct yourself. Because when you leave this body, you're still yourself. Understand this? We know this. And if we reincarnate, we get another set of matter that, that makes a denser body. And we do it all over again. And at some point, we won't need to reincarnate because we're purified. So we just won't need to anymore. We've learned all the lessons necessary to purify. Now, for you or me, I don't know, a billion years, 10,000 years, 500, who knows? No. Um, Stanley, 
This the incarnation? 100. No, 92. So this gentleman teaches us every week. Uh, and I think that was quite perfect in the way you pronounced that. that it's a good reminder. You don't have to go somewhere to be in bliss, in heaven, of your own love and everything. It's where you, wherever is, you are. The world you is what you make it. The world is what you make it. Whether it's today, or tomorrow, or a hundred years from now, it's still you there. And this, this I'm going to write, can I, can I use that without royalties? Because that was... <laughs> without royalties. <laughs> anyway, that's my feedback. Love it. Love you. My daughter uh, read the blog and she wrote, did you write that? I said, no. It was, it was a guy who wrote it for me. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry. Love it. And then um, reminder. Manny brought a good point too about, um, um, you know, that if people have committed a lot of atrocities in the name of religion. Oh. And in the next question, Alan Kardec says, you know, religion has no greater enemies than those who defend the abuses um, it, it creates. And I'm kind of paraphrasing. Um, then if if religion is in any danger. We have to lay the blame on those who offer a false idea of it, to transforming it into a battleground of human passions and who exploit it to further their ambitions. And and a lot of us, just the fact that we came here, that we we're spiritists, um, we, we probably already know that, <laughs> you know, experienced that. But then I, I, I wanted to kind of put a spin on it. What do you think is spiritism's greatest threat? Spiritism's greatest threat? Mm -hmm. If religion's greatest threat is the people who are defending it, trying to make it, you know, sugarcoat it. What, what do you think is Spiritism's greatest threat? Those kind of trying to debunk it. But we're, they're proving that their ground is not being held. Right? So, do you think that the greatest threat to Spiritism is outside Spiritism then? Or do you think our greatest threat is within our own ranks? That's the Course in Miracles states that the uh, rea reality, the re reality can never be threatened because it, it is what it is and it can never be threatened and that which changes is illusion. So spiritism, <laughs> when it's practiced, it can't even be threatened. So there's no threat. It's the truth. I mean, we, we, we're experiencing the truth when, when we really get into spiritism. When we feel that spirit that's inside of us and know that we are part of the spirit. You know, that, that, that's true. It, it's true. That's all there is to it. And the truth can't be threatened. You know, the, the opposite of truth, truth has no opposite. And spiritism is the truth as far as I, my experience is concerned, not my belief. Uh, so. Nick Sanchez here on Facebook also thinks like um, uh, Stanley says there is no real threat. No, I, I agree. I think the truth. I think the what he said. That's actually probably its greatest threat is that it's it's is the truthfulness of it. I mean, it doesn't have any hidden motive. You know, it's not promising you anything. It's not saying these are you know the rules you have to follow to get to heaven and you have to do this this and this. You know, it's it's, it's just a it's just a, it gets down to the basic truth of and try and trying to you know scientifically prove that as well. I think I think that aspect of it is the greatest threat. People see that and they are trying to protect their own faith and their own religion, and so they see that as a threat. Is the mm. is just the truthfulness and the sincerity of it and the simpleness of it and good point. You know, I think that's what what the greatest threat is. Good point. Very good point. <laughs> here. I want to see some other people involved. But I was I was thinking too that like just from the things that I've seen because if I would, if it was kind of just me like coming to the lectures and and reading the books like I'd be I would really see nothing but but you know when I when I talk to people and I hear what's kind of going on I I do see sometimes like you have um, people kind of getting mistaken like you know like the doctrine itself is like it's very hard. I mean, personally, I don't find any any threat to the doctrine itself, you know. But as far as um, sometimes, you know, you see spiritists kind of putting people.
people on pedestals, like maybe you know, our famous mediums, you know, where, where um, and I, I don't want to say anything bad about the mediums, I'm just saying that, you know, we're all spirits. You know, we're all, we're all people, so if, if a medium is doing good work, you know, it, we, 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 you know, we shouldn't put too much, you know, to make them famous necessarily. You know. right, we just have to be careful not to take the fact by, by the cause, you know, instead of thinking, what is the cause, we take the effect. So mediums are the effect. So spiritism, is, it's not something invented or created. Basically, the spirits of the dead people, and they have reached the level of uh, uh, good faith. Like there are a lot of people on this planet that have good faith. Not not everybody is trying to, to you know, to take advantage of a situation of a person. There are people that they are are good people. There are a lot of good people on this planet. So those spirits, they came and they said, let me tell you this. So if it was not through spiritism, eventually we will reach everything we know from spiritism, from the spirits, we will reach with science. That's why I agree with Stanley, there is no threat. Because what is the threat for the, uh, for instance, for example, uh, the, um, any natural law like gravity. It's a natural law, there is no threat. You like it or not. Quantum physics is a threat. Exists. Quantum, <laughs> Quantum physics, physics. <laughs> because you can change it, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, well it's all natural <laughs> laws. Current so, theories will, will adapt to new theories based on new findings like quantum physics, which is not a threat to anything except the people that think I'm right when they need to realize everything is evolving. So right. that's another topic. Yeah, so. yeah, no, but um, <laughs> what I'm saying is like, we need to be careful not to take the, the facts by the cause. Because this is a, mediums are, they are consequences of this, this knowledge. The mediums, they have been here on Earth since the beginning. Because since the beginning, there was a, a spirit and there was a communication since the first human, we are communicating with the spirits right now, and we don't even know, and we don't even notice. We are communicating with each other in a, on a spiritual level. My spirit is communicating with yours, communicating with ours. So we were just gonna be unveiling all these truths little by little. If it if it's not with the spiritism, it's with science, because. Eventually, science will prove that we we are spirits, that we we are immortal beings, that we don't die. Eventually, I think it's part of. Uh, let me think of what I might want to add. Um, what I thought I heard in Steve's remark or question is, you know. You know, was it a threat? Like some guys are so top, you know, and they're getting all this promotion and hoopla, and they're starting to get popular, and then it's going to be, you know, this is really something we should follow. These popular. Here's what I. This is my belief. Back to beliefs again. Um, you know, I think I'm right. Not sure, but I think because spiritism is a truth, it's information of truth. That's the simplest way I can say it. That short thing, that's good for me saying it really short. Um, it'll take care of itself, right? So if, if there's those that are abusing, I think that'll take care of itself because the truth will prevail. I believe this. Um, and so I think it's okay. I, I don't, I'm not concerned that it would take a path of this popularity and then help put a, a negative connection into the spiritism thing. I think it'll take care of so my belief would be shouldn't have to be concerned with that. Yeah, I was thinking actually, like, I think in the very end of the Mediums book, it says, like, our biggest enemy, and it's not really talking about the question I'm asking, but it's, our biggest enemy is pride, you know, selfishness, self-centeredness. Mm, mm, so, mm. so if you kind of put that in context of the spiritist mm. movement, whoever, you know, it's so like true. whoever kind of comes up forward as a leader, I agree. You know, it's hard to say like what's in somebody's heart as far as 
us sitting here and talking to people, like, you know, because we can put on one face and really have but, I agree. But, um, yeah, yeah. I think it, that is a threat for everything, actually. Okay, let's, let's, let me go back. One. I'll close with this, though, and I think we can all appreciate this. The law of justice. That's the law of the universe. And God, God's justice? Justice. The law of justice. But right? I do understand that would be mean. abuse. That would be fake. That would be right. Um, and it, 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 if human and right, we all understand that ego and human pride are all things in the way of our evolution, our growth. We understand this. I think spiritists probably know this well. I do. I've learned that through spiritism more than anything else in my life, probably. Um, so there is a law, a natural law, and it's the law of justice. And so for spiritism to prevail as truth and continue its education of humans and any other planet that it's part of, or race, or sort of spirit type, being, for example, then I think the law of justice, back to the same thing I said a minute ago, um, will balance that out to the truth. So I know that's my what is law of justice if not law of love? Well, it's another I think law. everything is love. And it, which is in love. By the everything way. is love. It's just a different name. So everything is like love. That. So justice it means love. I think Stanley love. compares to that. He's made comments in the relative mm -hmm. law. Because yeah. there is a natural law of love. It's, it's to no, me, everything it's is love. love so. It's love that is attracting the 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 planets and creating it's all the law of law that is creating lives and planets and galaxies it's all love we give different names because i don't know why we love to complicate things we, and we have a primitive language maybe it's good that we love to complicate but it's all love i've always kind of had the the like uh, I don't know my belief that when things like fall out of order that I don't necessarily need to do anything to fix them that they'll kind of write themselves like especially with people like I don't need to throw stones at people <laughs> like you know if, I, if somebody is is doing something wrong like I I really believe that um, I want to say maybe the law of action reaction will like take care of it that I don't I don't need to be the do the justice you yeah, know yeah. so things like that but then but then again as you know it is our place to take action right. you know at, at some point it's, it's kind of hard to find the line like where, yeah. where do I need to stand and where do I need to to to, to wait you know Good, I agree. Yeah. that's what I was thinking about how, how much do we settle down and just watch it happen because there is a law of love or a law of justice how much of it do we have to take action and actually do something about it and you, mean, do you, you mean after after you you mean after you did all you could to uh, what to to how that thing? Do you, you know that that's all that you had to do? How much do you know? If well, more we have this. We have this, over. We have the responsibility for us, mm -hmm. and then for others. But then first for yes. us. But the, the limitation is when we we have to uh, to study our our own own boundaries, own boundaries, so we can tell if we are not going through crossing that line mm -hmm. of boundaries but basically uh, the spirits they say that first we have the responsibility with us although people always try to change what is outside they go they try to change people's life you now with the, to their kids or their spouses they say no you shouldn't do this you should do that so they're usually we try to change people's lives and then we will uh, sit down and see how are we going with, with our plans, with our goals and that's the opposite. At mm -hmm. first we take care of ourselves and then we can uh, be responsible for mm -hmm. others. It reminds and me of uh, the uh, Star Trek. Um, their motto is the prime directive, non-interference. So they'll go to whatever's planet and they would uh, they want to keep it they interfere and give them technology they could be people have to learn on their own and people have to make mistakes if you keep on feeding people and they don't learn 
they're going to keep on. So sometimes you have to step in That's when you true. need to create harmony. True. So if you see yeah. harmony there, what your, your perspective is, I guess, you know, live and let live, it, it, it's a tough call. Yeah. That's and remember that God, God is not God or uh, whatever intelligence, whatever you want to call, it doesn't really matter the word you use. God is not taking away our pains and our experiences. We still have to go through them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and I, I did, I think I've been studying the gospel and it, was it in the gospel where they they ask? I forget where I read it. Where they ask, like you know, what should we sh like? Is it our place to help try to end other people's suffering, right? Or or should we allow them to go through suffering as their own means of evolution? Right. And, like the Buddha. Right? And and I, I believe the answer was actually it said like we we should be like you know have the resignation and accept like think our situations in our lives and accept them like with resignation. But we should also, in the law of charity, of do as much as we can yeah. to help other people of out of suffering. Right. You know? right. Yeah. So one, one thing I got out of the what I have learned about the spirit is, uh, is that when we do that, when we try to help other people, it's, that's not the purpose of our lives. Because if we really get down to yeah. doing service, right. we're doing it for ourselves, and the, and exactly. the. Uh, the other person certainly could benefit, but this isn't the purpose. The purpose is to is to purify that spirit that's inside of us, and we do that through service. So the consequence, the consequence of this wonderful world, you know, that's the, that's the that's the thing. But we're not here to be helping others. No, we're here to be purifying ourselves. And in doing that, we are certainly helping the world. This yeah. is my, what, I, what I have understood from what I have studied. Uh, as far as, it, let me extend, so, so I, I like that feedback, and uh, the, the gospel according to spiritism is what Steve just mentioned, and, and it does, uh, has written that, you know, if you, it's okay to help, including help the suffering of the other, going, that's going through the trial, right? That's a, a part of service. Um, but it also talks about that there's things that you should have helped with and the fact that it, and that turned into something bad or evil that could have been prevented that you went left alone then you missed it you missed the opportunity to help and it's written just in, in words similar to that so let me say it again in the absence of you helping something bad happened that was an instant and an opportunity for you to really help that other individual in that situation, whatever it may be. And so we have a role here. The Service pure, is a pure, good word. The pure spirit. How you... The pure spirit would have taken care of that situation if you faced it. Well, okay, so we're all yeah, learning exactly. here, but yeah, this yeah, is a... It is a that, uh, the he would have taken that care of that situation, and of course, helping that situation. But in doing so, he is purifying himself, and he is just expressing that 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 God within. When he's taking care of the situation, but that's not his purpose. His purpose is to our purpose. Sure, right? the primary purpose, purpose, purpose is ourselves. Purpose. Yes, is to purify ourselves. And we're all right. agree there. No, we right. do that through service. That's so, especially because we are not all prepared to help other persons. Sometimes. Well, in this case, I tried you couldn't. to help. Well, well we but if you so don't know, you. if you know, of course, if you know, and if you don't do anything, mm -hmm. of course, then that the, like, the law of action and reaction, that's yeah. something else. But sometimes, even though we know what it needs to be done, and I've been there, you try to help, and you get out of that situation because you are not, uh, uh, you are not in balance with yourself, with your life. Oh, okay. You get more disturbed going there and helping so okay. it is better to elevate your thought and pray for that person you know well, this because case, i would be in this situation help. that i i wanted to help i really wanted deep inside my heart but i i was not prepared to help well hold so on. i got kind of disturbed at okay. me and well, kind of if the presence but, wasn't there within inside of you Yes. You know, you couldn't, you couldn't help. Well, exactly. maybe she did. So I heard something. You were describing a physical condition. And then what you also described to me is what I heard is you did help through prayer and your energy oh, absolutely. and absolutely. delivery of thought. But what you're praying so, for is a presence. So you did it in the way you could. 
right? So think about uh, what uh, just happened. Send the energy, so and do what you can. You did the way you yeah. could yeah. at the time. Like you can look back uh, and I, you know, wow, I wish you think some instance. I wish I could have done that better. Right. Um, but then guess what? You did it as good as you can at the time. At the time, that's the best you could have done. Yeah. Unless, really, you're like, no, I totally messed up. It, it, makes, it makes you that's different, right? It makes you so, rethink dogmas, uh, Christianity, uh, lay down your life for somebody else. I mean, if that's the biggest, and then you rethink that and say, is that the right thing to do? Because right. we're we yeah. we're in self-preservation. We we our we body want wants to, to live. We yeah. want to to be with this body, but to know that this is temporary and it's, it's going to somehow. It's it's not permanent, I guess, because I, we see nature is not permanent, but yet there's. Um, to, to, there's a higher purpose than this physical body. There's a higher purpose than, right. than 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 what everyone's telling us. To look deeper into to um, understand deeper into religions. It's beautiful to to go there to understand uh, your true purpose, what your essence. Is it this nine-to-five job? Is it the, to you know have children, to procreate? What, what is our true purpose, our essence? So it's, it's to reevaluate it all. It's, 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 mm -hmm. it's mind-blowing. Yeah. And it kind of takes us back to what we kind of started about having beliefs and taking action too. Is like because I, I was I actually when I got to that question I said that's really kind of like good for me because I kind of sometimes see people suffering and have the belief like oh I should let them like figure it out on themselves you know so so that they can evolve where. Where I, you know, and because of my belief, you know, maybe I wasn't really doing good. <laughs> you know, maybe that was like a very convenient belief for me to have, so that I didn't have to like step out of my comfort zone and help somebody. Mm. You know, when when maybe I should have like stopped and and, mm. and done something for somebody else. So, you know, um, when when I uh, create harmony, um, set the example of harmony, and then create harmony outside, it makes you feel so good when you help other people. Yeah service to other people makes you feel really, really good. Mm. It gives you purpose of, of the existence. Mm. Purpose, what's the purpose of this body? To help other people. I, I think it's a big thing. But be the rock, be the example um, of, of, of true spirit, of love. And then that will propagate all around you. I, I think that we're touching on something too here. It just came, um, if we can go a little bit further. So we're here, we're here to evolve ourselves but we are uh, one being, human being, in the, this entire globe that we live on, uh, which is alive and evolving in nature, Reggie's uh, feet from us every week, which is a great reminder of everything is connected. Um, our, this planet and, and the, the, the happiness of life for all humans on this planet can only evolve when we all do. So because, just because we're here to evolve ourselves, the interaction with other humans is a requirement for our evolution and our own race or beingness, uh, the human being. So, so if you think about it, that it is all of one and one of all, um, then it, logically you can understand why we continue to help each other in these acts of kindness of strangers and things that it's going to continue. The primary, as Stanley noted, we, we understand, I believe very clearly, that we are here to evolve ourselves. And we're not going to tell you what to do about you, we're going to tell ourselves what to do about ourselves. Um, but how we interact with each other and how that spawns, uh, you know, better thinking and more compassion, I think that's that whole connection to the other people. And then actions that we can take um, to, to assist evolution in any way or assist someone in their suffering and maybe one word we say to them just the compassion we give that person changes their life the, all these things are real that really happen with the interaction of humans and so our role here is beyond us in a way and it's another topic um, but we even do prayer here that affects our neighborhood our city our state our country and other countries around the globe and we make prayer of love and light to the planet and all beings on it uh, and so I wanted to make sure that we understood that there's a bigger picture uh, and that's everyone on this planet and we're is raising their vibration to a place where 
uh, maybe that word evil kind of disappears one day on this planet. And that's really a, a true goal uh, of where this planet is uh, governed to evolve to. Well, it's, it's time so, for us to move, conversation. It's time for us to sorry. move on to our second sorry, part. Sorry, I had to finish this all. Out I wanted to say I could I could sum up everything <laughs> you just said in, in one phrase. You know, if you're getting on this plane, then you must remember to put your oxygen mask on before assisting other passengers. Ah, like first. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there so you go. That's yeah. very simple. Nice. I like that. I've eaten a lot of fortune cookies. That's a good example. You've <laughs> a lot of fortune cookies. Yeah, I have all, all kinds of, I have a lot of one-liners. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, and, and before we, like, before we go and before, you know, I don't know if we're going to end for our Facebook crowd, but I mean, it's just kind of a good question to put out there. And I don't, I don't want to talk about it now. I want to just ask, ask you guys and have you take it home with you and mm -hmm. take it home with you on Facebook and think about it but you know like it's a good time to ask like what am I doing with my life you know like what do I believe in and what action am I taking like proactively for those beliefs and like what am I what am I doing if I believe that I'm here to help other people or to help myself and to, you know make the world a better place like what what am I doing you know I'm asking myself what am I doing <laughs> but that's just that's just, just a good thing. Five different ways. What am I doing? Yeah. What am I doing? So, so it's a good thing to just take home and reflect. I like you know. to uh, ask myself every once in a while, what am, what am I doing with my reincarnation? Oh. What am I doing as Cynthia? Because I'm never gonna be Cynthia again. I'm not, never gonna be this setting of uh, family group of environment of. You know, I'm not never going to have this group of friends in this, in this setting. So, what am I doing as Cynthia in this setting, right? How can Cynthia help my immortal spirit to grow, to learn how to be closer to love, to allow love uh, to be more like the... In, familiar to me mm -hmm. because we we don't allow I don't allow love I like to put in the first person I don't allow love it's not love that is not looking for me it's me <laughs> trying to block love to manifest in my life so what am I doing with my reincarnation I love to ask myself that what am I not doing that I should be doing? Mm -hmm. That I could be doing? Yes. Right. Like it says in the spirits book, not only will we be judged for, you know, the wrongs we've done, but we'll be judged for the good that we did not do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because not doing anything, well, it's not things. not doing uh, wrong things. Because people say, oh, but I am not doing anything wrong. Well, but you're not doing anything good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? So, being just like uh, stuck in your place and not doing anything good doesn't mean that you are doing something good. Actually, it's not. The spirits, they say, we must do good. In like, action, in like, action, it's not like a good I'm, thing. I'm in a pretty good place right now, just so you guys know. I'm doing a lot of stuff to help other people, so I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Fence, <laughs> fence sitters, You're fence your sitters. Yeah. Well, they say with the spirits, they say in the books that we read, channeled by mediums, that fence sitters, they feel a lot of remorse when they get out of the body. You know, people that don't really show who they are. Mm -hmm. They come to the church or a spiritist group. They, they listen to those um, teachings, but outside of the church, they are somebody else. Those are fence sitters. You know, they never really, show who they are. They're fence sitters. They're, they're, they are fence they're sitters they're because they do not decide what they are. They live double life. And I've been there. Trust me. I dated a Gemini. I'm not <laughs> I'm not saying I'm I'm out of there. I'm a fence a sitter yeah. as well <laughs> in a yeah. certain aspects of my life. I'm trying to be as true truthful to myself as I as possible. I am not there yet. I'm not saying that I'm there. I'm still fence sitter. But the 
I'm not in at that stage that I used to be, that I had truly a double life. Do you believe you're exactly where you're supposed to be? Sure. I'm exactly where I choose to be. Well, um, I do, I do believe, I do believe that, but Everybody. I need to be more in alignment with my higher self, with but, my true well, self. That's where you are. You, 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 that need that you have. Is well, where you are. Uh, I fight, I fight against myself. Does my, not. my, my essence, my true self, feels something, but I try to force something else. The fact All that you're the recognizing time. that you're already evolving. Um, I, I have received easy. a message a month ago and it said... Not easy. I was in a, a similar state, like, okay, what, are, what should I be doing next? And the message was, ask. Ask what's best, best for me in prayer. Ask what's best for me. So, so that exercise started happening and the best for me things that I was looking for are showing up in my life. So who'd you ask? I uh, asked my Holy Spirit, um, God, and uh, and the way I pray. That's uh, that's what I asked. So I, I asked my my guardian, my higher self, which is the Holy Spirit in me. And this is uh, something that I think you can appreciate that answer because that's what you use in your terminology um, and the universe. Um, so what's best for me? Tell me, show me, and it's my job to observe. So that I can then learn and go, okay, that's what I was talking about. Let me go that way. Let me do this. Let me think about that. Let me contemplate this. Let me contemplate that. Do you believe that maybe it was already there, but the fact that you made the question made you able to see it? Yes, absolutely. So part of it could have been that I removed some things that I that were in the way to see. Mm. Right? So it, it can be all of that. So it's an interesting dynamic, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so there's a lot of clearing that I've been doing lately. Um, yeah, and martial arts, the freedom our greatest obstacle is ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, right. Ignorance, fear, ignorance. Mm -hmm. So yes, all yes. That, all that, I, I expect all, our all of that. Right? Mm -hmm. So I can only see because now I'm, I'm like right. blocked, right? Mm -hmm. all of that. That's mm -hmm. really true for me too. Yeah. So I tried to hand it over to you, Cynthia, like, you know, but then I, I, I blame you for going on and on and on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but if you, if you, are you ready to start your... I am. So we'll say goodbye to the Facebook crowd. Um, yes, come to our magnetism workshop. It is beautiful to learn the, uh, use the animal magnetism, the magnetism that we naturally have and helping others, healing others. If you'd like to become a light worker, so that people know the, the term, and helping others uh, with their symptoms, headaches, depression. Come on July 22nd and 23rd, we will have breakfast, lunch, and coffee break, all included. It's only unbelievable prices, a donation of $30. You're not gonna find this anywhere. $30 for birthday.